Using fiat money today is primarily due to the fact that it does not limit the amount of currency a nation can print. The Latin phrase fiat means let it be done or let it be. When applied to money, it simply means that a currency is money because a government says it should be. You have a dollar bill in your wallet because the government has decreed it to be money. This means that this form of money is not backed by anything, such as gold. Now on a gold or silver or any other commodity standard, the government can only issue currency equal to the amount of gold it owns, which would increase slightly every year. The amount of new gold coming to market roughly corresponds to the growth of the U.S. population in the past. Currency and gold have not always been one-to-one -one relationships. At one point in the United States, they were on a 40% gold standard, meaning 40% of its money supply was backed by gold and 60% of it was not. As part of its early history, the U.S. was also on a bimetallic bime standard with gold and silver backing its currency. In either case, a government is limited to circulating only the amount of currency corresponding to the value of the commodity it backs. Government spending is limited because they cannot circulate more money. If they do not have a gold standard or other restrictions, they can circulate more currency. Having more money allows them to spend more, and the modern system promotes more and more spending. The national debt simply grows as excess is incurred. The problem with a government's ability to spend more than its income is that it eventually does. It may be a legitimate need, but as more and more currency is printed, whether as paper notes or digital entries, the value of the currency is the diluted. Ultimately, we are forced to spend more currency units to buy the same amount of goods and services, and this is what causes inflation. It doesn't matter how low the inflation rate is, it adds up over time. When a nation uses a fiat currency, this erosion effect occurs. Slowly, dilution of currency eventually causes prices to rise. Since leaders eventually succumb to the temptation to create more and more currency to solve their financial problems. It would be possible to limit that dilution through the adoption of a commodity standard. The history of fiat currencies tell us that they will eventually fail. Even if you save diligently in your own currency, the purchasing power of those saving savings erodes over time. A fiat currency's purchasing power erodes on a long-term basis, sometimes slowly and sometimes rapidly. A crucial promise of money is that it serves as a long-term store of value. In this regard, fiat currencies has consistently shown itself to be unreliable, or as gold has proven to be reliable. All major fiat currencies have failed to compete with gold as a long-term store of value. In today's world, all currencies are fiat for the first time in history, meaning that there is no commodity standard backing any of today's currencies. They are not subject to any official restrictions on their circulation. Fiat currencies eventually undergo frequent resets according to studies. Today, even reserve currencies such as the U.S. dollars are included in this category. Lastly, there is no need to rely on a fiat currency system regardless of what may lie ahead for the global currency system. You can establish your own gold standard, unlike any other form of money that has surpassed all others.